now 640. Um, take a roll call. Hang on a second, I gotta use some stupid. Uh oh, what happened to Peter? <laughs> we lost him. This is going to be one of those meetings. <laughs> I'm not touching any of my dials, let me tell you. <laughs> Looks like Marie went to help him. Oh, okay. Well, You're sitting here. Are we going to play musical chairs? Okay, I've just had a gender change. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Roll call. Carolyn, you're here. Yes. Uh, Jay is not. Ollie's here. Yes. Thank you. Ollie's here. Yep. Diane's here. Okay, so we have a quorum and I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, is there anybody, is there anything that we need to add to the agenda to, for tonight? Hearing none, we'll pass that on to old business approval of meetings or minutes from February 27th and March 13th. Holly had sent me a couple of corrections for the February 27th meeting. I made those corrections and sent out a second copy. So we'll use that copy if anybody had any. Can you make a motion to accept the minutes of February 27th as amended? They look fine to me. I'll second. Okay, Holly. Um, I actually feel there's still another correction. You pulled out the other discussion items, but it still looks like it was reported by the parade work group. Well, it's just, it's about the parade. It doesn't have to do with the, anything to do with anything else. That was, that was the course of the discussion. So that's why I put it there. Um, but that wasn't all about the parade. That was about advertising. That was about the chicken barbecue. That wasn't all about all right, the parade. Put a subheader on it. Give me a subheader and I'll I'll change it again. It just well, this is well. I said the rest of it was general discussion. It wasn't. All right, so I put general discussion then. It's headed okay. with general discussion. Okay, fine. If if everybody else is happy with it, it's just not parade info. It's indented like it's under the parade. That's all. New paragraph, <laughs> make a space. Put a notation in your in, in your notes there. All right. All right. So it's been so, moved and seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Hi, Holly. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Kelly. <clears throat> Diane, right. did you oh, yes. Hi. And for March 13th. I have a amendment. What's that? I have something I would like to address one of the comments in the minutes. Uh, all right, I'm gonna, well, tell me what it is. I'll have to go get it. But. Huh? Okay. Go back? Yeah, hang on, I'm going back to my desk. No, it's okay, it's a small thing. I think it's very, very easy for you to um address if everybody's in agreement I'm, I'm sorry he just needed to go back to his own desk so he had a workspace to work on okay where are we it's underneath the um, fireworks update, almost to the bottom. It's the second paragraph from the bottom um, where Adam suggested the after parade fireworks need to be shifted. 
You wrote the comment, this seems clearly counter to all information collected earlier. We've always wanted everything in South Deerfield after the parade, so. Well, that's not what I meant, Holly. It's all the information we got about why we couldn't have it here is what I'm talking about. On that night, I'm saying, perhaps on that night. Yeah. That, that was what everything in the last meeting did pertain to. Okay. It's the clarification of the night of the night's discussion. <clears throat> okay, maybe I'm too fussy, but it sounds like Adam presented information that was contrary to what we wanted to happen. No, it's not a question of what we wanted to happen. It's a question we couldn't do it in South Deerfield. That's what we've been constantly being told, and now all of a sudden we can be do we can do it in South Deerfield potentially. Okay. Yeah, potentially. So. Okay, but this comment was made at the last meeting when everything was going to be in Old Deerfield. Where? So where are we? Sorry, I'm I'm not finding. Oh, fireworks. Okay, the second page. Is the second from the last paragraph. I just would like to strike that one sentence. All right. I'll, sure. I'll strike this if that works. Okay. Any other uh, corrections in here? I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. All right. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Hi, Diane. Hi, Holly. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Kelly. All right, it's approved. So I will make those, I will make the correction in the revised. Let me see if I can find the that first one too. Somehow. Huh. Well, I'll break you. Uh, I'll break out your for the final one, Holly. I'll break out that comment section. I can do it. I thought I'd done it before. All right. Moving on to the next item of business is. Victoria, uh, pictorial postmark update. They were both accepted. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just had to remove the inner line, the inner circle of the drawing. The artist had no problem with that. And so it was quickly removed. So they're working on getting the stamp. Deerfield has the stamp already. Um, I'd like to move forward with planning an event. The thing is, it has to be on May 7th or after. It can't be before that, which was the date we had selected. So I know we have Founders Day events on May 6th. Oh. Um, May 7th might be a, a fine Sunday. date. That, yeah. The problem is it's a Sunday, so I, the post office is closed. Well, Robin has already saved the date on her calendar and said she'll be there. On Sunday? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and actually, Charlene, Charlene said she'll try to be there as well. She's from South Deerfield. Wow. Uh, but Robin said she can use both stamps in the absence of Charlene. And okay. so she's holding the day. Oh. Yeah, so um, I know we have a lecture plan that day, which is at two, right, at Frontier. Yeah. So maybe it's some things so we're not doing it at the same time. We can do it in the morning. I don't know. Yeah, well, it would make sense late morning maybe and just do it for an hour. Something like that. If, if, if anybody's got any comments on this, that'd be great. I mean, it's just it has to be at the post office. Nope. She can she she's like a traveling roadshow. She can bring the stamps with her. Well, why don't we do it at the um can we do it at the speaker event? Do it beforehand for the two hours beforehand. Do it from yeah. like one to or do it from like one to two at the school and try to encourage people to come to the you know, well, that's a good idea because then more then people could actually participate too. Mm -hmm. So we just need to reserve that through Scott. Well, we got, got Marie, we're going to have problems with the church. 
not necessarily because we could um um I'll check and see exactly what time they're done because they were totally gone by the time I got there at one. So find out what time their thing is because we could just set up right in the front as you first walk in. We could yeah. set up right there uh, if there's a conflict from like 12 to one and then at one o'clock move down. Well, you could just leave it there because people can come in and go out or come in and go towards where the, the um, event is. And we'll, we'll just have to have a bunch of stamped envelopes ready if people mm -hmm. don't bring their own. Yeah, I have a plan. Like my thought was, is letting kids, setting up a couple tables, letting kids write letters to themselves in the future. We could have the envelope stamped. We can maybe put them in the time capsule or something like that. And then um, have some stamps for people to take home if they want. I don't know. And then Robin said the kids can't actually touch the stamp and do it themselves, but they can stand there when she stamps them and then they can take one with them. I don't know the two, the two winners, but I have some thoughts. I just hadn't really put much effort into it until I got word that the stamp was approved. Well, let's talk about it some more, but okay. I, think, I think we can work something out. And because it's, it's May, um, we could set up the tent outside too, if we had to, and just do it right outside the building, mm -hmm. you know, right in front yeah. of the building. The only risk would be if it's windy and all the paper, but. Yeah, but I think we could probably do it right inside the door. Mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just talk to the, the church group and tell them on that day, we might be there a little early because uh, Scott says they're very accommodating and okay. that, you know, so that they might break up a little early or something. So I don't think it'll be a problem. Okay. Diane? Sort of an odd question, but is it a stamp, like a posted stamp or a cancellation stamp? A, cancellation a rubber, stamp. a rubber, a rubber stamp like that. It goes in the upper. It. Pardon? It's, it's the stamp over the stamp. It's the, the cancellation. Stamp over the stamp. It's the cancel. Yeah. Okay, the cancellation. And you have to have it done on a on a stamped envelope. So they'd have to bring a stamped envelope or something like that with yeah. them. Okay. Right. So yeah. Can, I mean, our plan is some, to provide. We can have it. some ready and just sell them to them for fifty yeah. cents or so, or whatever, sixty cents, whatever the cost okay. of the stamp is. All righty. You know. Okay. Thanks. It may be something too if we're working with the the school kids, Diane, to just let them know ahead of time that that's going on, uh -huh. and we can advertise it when, you know. Yeah, they can do one of their take home, one of the take home announcements or something like that. Yeah, and we we can also advertise it through the school's newsletter and things. Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a whole plan. I just wanted to make sure I had permission okay. to pick okay. that date. Yeah, I had a feeling you had you had the parent teacher link in there too, also. So uh, yeah, go ahead with that one. Okay. All right, so we're we're good on this, and you, we'll work out the details. But uh, this that's great. All right. Uh Next item here is post parade weekend activities update and plan for advertising. Anybody like to venture this one? <laughs> I think Chris, we should ask Chris to give us an update. Maybe he has more of an update since this morning. Um, <clears throat> Well, I mean, this, this all ties into the whole fireworks situation, right? And so we have, uh, recently identified a creative option for South Deerfield uh, because we do believe we can work with the railroads and the state fire, fire marshal to actually create a safety zone that spans the railroad tracks, which we didn't think was possible. Um, we think it's possible now because of recent examples in Massachusetts where this has been done. So we have concrete examples where it's possible to do that. Um, and especially because that railroad track isn't heavily traveled, we can coordinate with the schedulers and the people that control the tracks to know exactly when a train might be there in Deerfield, South Deerfield. So, so and the fireworks company would actually do all that in terms of upfront work with the fire marshal and then tracking it on the day of the event in case there's a delay, et cetera. So, so the ideal situation, going back to what Holly said, is if we could set off a, a decent fireworks display in South Deerfield, 
with a great viewing location, which would be mainly frontier regional school fields, uh, not the track and the football field, maybe one set of bleachers, but we, because of the safety zone, it would cross into the track. Um, and so we wouldn't want anybody on the track football field. That would be the caveat there. But then all the other fields, the baseball fields, there's a couple of soccer fields, at least when I look at aerials, I'm not exactly sure how current they are. Um, we could have people and events there and then leading up to fireworks viewing. So it would be a rather spectacular viewing location with parking at Frontier Regional and Deerfield Elementary and on North Main Street also, mainly um, on the part that's there close to the center of town where it's very wide and you can book cars there without blocking traffic. So, and then people could walk to the, to the viewing venue. Um, so, so, you know, I'm jumping ahead in terms of a Friends of Deerfield update. Well, where are we at in terms of this option? First of all, there's four property owners involved in the so-called safety zone, safety circle um, that we draw on these maps. Um, and um, we have sign-offs from two of them right now. Um, the other one is uh, the main one, which is uh, Pekarsky's Field, uh, which is just between the railroad tracks and the South Deerfield Fire District and EMS buildings. Um, a couple questions that will be answered by the fireworks company, but I, I don't see any issue there. And then uh, we have one other property owner that would be in a small part of the safety circle, and we're working with that property owner also to answer any questions, et cetera. And in fact, as of today, we're scheduled for the uh, fireworks company experts to come back to South Deerfield next Monday and be able to meet with property owners and answer any questions or concerns. Never mind meeting with the higher police chiefs and their staffs to make sure how we're going to secure everything and organize everything. So there's a good probability. It's not inked yet. It's not done. It's not all signed off on by all property owners, um, but there's a good chance that we could have fireworks a fairly, it will be an impressive display um, from across the railroad tracks from Frontier Regional Track and, um, and uh, football field. And that then Frontier Regional becomes an obvious viewing point and uh, post parade events point. And that was always the preference as Holly said, um, we're getting very creative and pursuing all the avenues we have to deal with railroads and state fire marshal, but we're pretty confident if the property owners um, agree um, that we can organize this and it'll work out better from a traffic and parking control plan too. Right. All right. Wish you the best. Thank you. Just to hear how you, you've been working very hard trying to find options and uh, this is a nice one. You're pursuing it, thank you, thank you. I hope you do well on, on getting all the permission. Holly? Um, two questions. One, um, will there be other than fireworks considered as part of this mix? And two, um, we need to be clear that the parade work group has the frontier and Deerfield Elementary lots tied up till probably close to five. Yeah, so, um, so um, I guess the assumption would be that all post parade pre fireworks activities would happen at Frontier Regional School and nothing would happen in old Deerfield in this scenario. Nothing would happen. So any of the things that Friends of Deerfield wants to do, any things that the parade work group and the 350th steering committee wants to do, the, the, the Deerfield rec committee, what they want to do, that would be moved and coordinated onto frontier regional school playing fields. Okay. 
So that that's the that's the assumption there. Um, in terms of tying up parking lots, well, I, I think we have to defer a little bit to Chief Pachurik and his team in terms of where they could um, work with the parade work group to to end things and, and to turn things around, et cetera. There might be some options for the street, but that all has to be worked out and very, and it has to be controlled by police because um, there's a mention of Pelican was mentioned in a, a previous meeting. Obviously, that's a government contractor. There has to be control of who goes in and out of that parking lot at all times. We we had um, Rocky of our committee had a, a brief conversation with Pelican, and it wasn't favorable because they are working that Saturday. Um, we haven't escalated it to ask further. That was just an, an immediate response we got. Um, so I don't know if that's an issue, but both Adam and Chief Paturik are aware um, of what the parade work group is doing and in fact has supported us in what we've been doing. So this is where it is a little bit of, we, we got to make sure we coordinate. Um, we don't know yet how many participants we have, so it could be that we could use um, the pass through area of frontier and the other side of it could be open for the initial part until the parade people clear out. But at this point, we don't know how many buses and or participants will be finishing up and, and getting their vehicles there. So as we evolve our list of participants, we'll have a better handle if we can shift more of that to Deerfield Elementary versus frontier. But those two lots were key on the parade route from this point. Yeah, we'll just have to see and get creative, I guess. I, I, I don't think Susie has done any more work on the after active, I mean, after parade activities until we had a com confirmation of where the fireworks are gonna do, you know, gonna be. So, I mean, we could get food trucks, we can figure out some other activities relatively fast, I think. Um, once we have confirmation of the fireworks. Dan. Somewhere in our advertising, just have the line, access to the high school parking lot is not until five o'clock due to the parade. You know, just somewhere in the advertising, just say, that's it, we're not gonna be there. And we can direct everything towards the grammar school area or town until then. Even signage, if need be. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea. Well, it sounds like we've got some good projection forward, and and um, a, a lot of what we're going to need to do is just work out the details as we get different components of what's going to happen. As long as we, you know, coordinate among ourselves, it. it Sounds like it's gonna work. Hopefully, hopefully. Chris nope. is- <laughs> I'm right. sure all of us have our fingers crossed and our toes. Yeah, I was like, yay, I like this well, news. Dan's been great about going to meetings. Everybody's been going to meetings, so hopefully it will happen. Holly? Um, I'm delighted that we're gonna have something in the village um, where the parade's going to finish up because I think the continuity is going to be good. So thanks for all the efforts in, in trying to do that. Um, the parade work group met last week because the presumption was when we met two weeks ago, we would have information about advertising within two to three days. That hasn't transpired and it doesn't look like we've got things shored up enough to advertise everything but we've got to get the word out. And Kelly has secured um, some quotes for advertising just for the parade. And so we're, we need to get some kind of sense on, do we go forward with that and just get the parade advertised? Because it's, it's late in the game here. Is the advertising, this is like the newspaper and that sort of, that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Digital and print. You want to just fill them in on what you got for a quote? Uh, sure, let me pull it up. So, I mean, it was based kind of somewhat off of Northfield, what they've been doing. 
Um, and then I gave her a budget. So they're giving us quite a discount, um, but it would be some front page banner ads in the recorder and the Gazette plus um, some digital e-blasts. And they gave us two different packages, which was, would be our options. And it would be a month's worth. So it would bring us, you know, depending on once we got the ad created, it would be probably maybe mid-April to May. So this would run continuously? Yeah, so the digital it would be like uh, their impressions. So they would go out weekly for the month. And then the print would be in, I think, eight consecutive papers or something like that. Or no, it's a month, so four consecutive papers. Well, no, eight if you count the recorder and the. Oh, what's it, it's like one a week, right, Kelly? Yeah. The, on, at the bottom banner, one a week. Mm hmm. And what is it? Um, it's just advertising the parade or this is how you enter or. Yeah, yep, yeah. and then volunteers looking for volunteers. Perfect. So we should go forward and just advertise the parade because the whole wait was to wait to advertise everything. I mean, my theory was is we could just start a little bit of parade advertising, and then once we shore up the information about everything else, then we can do a consolidated. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I think that's the most logical place to go. You guys need to get it out there and when we can build on it if 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 there's some however you you organize the um, banner or whatever if there's a way to create two little prongs and say we're going to put the fireworks right on here and, and just then create a composite um, and it would design it so that you could add to it easily yeah, it's it's a banner ad. It's it's not a great use of space for that. I think we'll have to just rethink um, the ad size once once we can add it all because you we want to add as much information as possible, especially since we're gonna have like three events that weekend. Yeah. Okay. And and I know Chris shared with us a really great graphic that he had done up. I mean, if we were able to just put that in, um, you know, with details. Um, I think that would be a really great ad to put for some consecutive weeks in the paper. And then you could just add to the fire, the fireworks and, and the other stuff as it comes along. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think, Chris, didn't you have the fireworks, the barbecue, and the parade on that one graphic, right? Yeah, yeah. so that would be the follow-up. You could possibly use that as a follow-up once we pin everything down. But go with the parade now and get people knowing there's stuff happening on that weekend. And then we can follow up with the one that covers all three major things um, in due time. And hopefully, hopefully within a week to two weeks, we're going to know. Okay. Uh, do we have a budget for that, Kelly? Or can you... It We're going to use the, it's going to come out of the parade, but at least this this first thing, and then afterward we'll have to talk about. So we'll okay. So you've already got the the parade authorization, so it would just come out of that budget. We don't need a, an additional one. Okay. It it is going to be a big impact because I mean, if we spend, you know what what the quote is, it's it's close. Well, what what was the it was like four four thousand. A little over four thousand. Yeah. So, um, so it is a, yeah. a significant chunk. That's why we were hoping to share our adver advertising across the board. But if if we have to do it, we have to do it. Well, I understand. I mean, this, but and but there's money, there's money's in there now. I mean, we don't. I I don't think money is the issue here. No, if that's part of your budget, don't don't worry about it. Van. Can we put Founders Day in that ad? Is this like a space? Is it a small space or? A it's a small space. Um, I had wanted to do a full like year's run of advertising. To, I mean, um, a full ad of all of our events, uh, which I don't know if that would actually come together because now it kind of makes more sense just to focus on the weekend solely. I mean, we could consider doing a small amount of advertising for Founders Day if you have firmed up your details. Um, we've got enough to give you something. I can always text you something afterwards, Kelly. 
of um we have we have a few things that we can just you know ringing in the bells lawn party music but so, i think yeah, i think know. things like this we can get uh papers like the greenfield recorder to run free as just a public announcement public service announcement they've been doing a lot of that with northfield's 350th oh, okay. once we, right. once we have a little bit of a schedule set and especially like that founder's day weekend they'll, they'll profile and they often will put it out on monday when they have less news like and it's there a was weekend a, there was an announcement about Northfield's 350th, they're going to do a dinner dance in the fall. I read that stuff all the time. You know, and it came out today. Oh, and okay. So, so we need to, once we pin these things down, we need to get into the queue and, um, yeah. and, and benefit from that type of, I'll call it free advertising, public service announcement. We, if you pitch stuff. it to the paper, it's, yeah, pitch it, if yeah. you pitch it. And we have a whole weekend of stuff. So if we do the postmark thing on Sunday, plus the lecture, plus Founders Day, it's going to be a weekend of stuff. They're going to like that. Okay, all righty. Can we pitch the idea to you, Kelly? Or do you want to well, give Well, why don't you give contact? me the details of your event for now, and we'll, we'll take a look and see what we got. Okay, all righty. Super. All right. Uh, was uh, Holly was that part of the parade working group update, or is this this coming? Are you going to do that now? Um, I don't. I don't have a ton more to add. Uh, we got the okay from Deerfield Elementary for parking, Frontier Regional for parking. Uh, we actually had. Um, we're trying to make the right contact with the right um, faculty member at Frontier, but I guess they're community service students. Um, probably will look to help with the parade um, as part of their community service credit. So Kelly's trying to make some contact now with um, what well, she did with Scott Dredge, right? And then he referred yeah. you to the faculty. Yeah, which have not responded. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, we're, we're working on that. Um, the so could, Frontier- park, Sorry, Kelly, uh, you got parking at Frontier and what's the other one? Deerfield, Deerfield Elementary. Elementary. Okay. And we also um, reached out um, to the two churches close to the route. Holy Name of Jesus said yes to using their parking lot on Thayer Street for mm -hmm. people who need to park. They are gonna put a float in and they said yes to sharing their bathrooms. Oh, so people yeah. will have a restroom stop there. We're asking the same of Holy Family, but the information took kind of like a, a circle route and it's now in the right hand. So we're just waiting to hear back. Um, what else? What else, what else? Would there um, be, Holly, would there be parking also at the DPW area? Or is that new? No, that's a staging, that's a staging area. Uh, the one on the one right across from Eastern Avenue on Sugarloaf. Oh, oh no. our town DPW, not the yeah. Uh, um, is, there isn't enough room there. There okay. isn't. Okay. Not with the new construction. That, that's I wondered if that hindered everything. And okay. and especially, I I don't know if they would work on that weekend, but we would probably politely ask them not to. But um, <laughs> anyway, okay. um, and. We're working on just being as creative as possible. Pam Hodgkins, who works for PBMA, has access to um, signage for bathrooms and no parking signs. So we're just trying to borrow things as best we can to keep the budget down. But the small but mighty parade work group keeps plugging away. So <laughs> That's wonderful, Holly. Thank so you. So um, at this point, because we're within three months of the event, how many people have ever ha have already committed to be in the parade? Local, local. And then I'll ask the same question for special groups that might be sourced from out of town. I couldn't, Chris, give you a roll up of numbers, but right now we have um, Shriners plus five other bands we're looking into two more um possibly a third um 
We've had two towns get back to us so far. People are not good at returning um, responses. People who have said they want to be in, um, we've had more than a dozen vintage cars, probably towards two dozen at this point. Um, a handful of businesses. Um, so we're, our next meeting is a week from tonight and we're splitting up the list to make calls to do reminders and follow up with people. So in terms of like specialty groups that come from farther away, is Shriners the only one, or do we have Mummers? Do we have? We're not doing mum, mum, Mummers. Were too expensive. Okay. Um, we have Lexington Fife and Drum from Lexington, Mass. Cool. Chester cool. Fife and Drum from Chester, Connecticut. Um, it was the Brattleboro band there. Oh, Brattleboro Legion Band. And then there's a company called New England Band Productions. And they proposed a couple of their bands. And the one that um, is going to work for ours, it's um, a kind of a Dixie land. Um, it's called Firehouse Dixie. <laughs> cool. Oh. So, so that's that's from out of the area i can't think of any i'm drawing a blank too i think there's one more in there uh, from out of the area or maybe not i don't know it's okay people's guessing we're okay <laughs> i think that was it we're looking did into it, um did the we approach the, the clydesdale team did we approach uh, that at all we have not approached it okay. um we have not do you have any contact with somebody as far as now it all kind of depends where they are regionally because they tend to go in regions and you know in terms of all the logistics involved in it so yeah it's probably, it's probably too late if it's within three months um i i think it depends on you know if people are going to have a fee to participate because we're crunching our numbers as we go. And if we have this advertising hit on top of our band costs that we have, then um, you know, we're beyond halfway through our budget. So we want to be careful. And um, is that budget, um, you divide things up uh, by parade and other things, or is everything all that pot of money that, that Carolyn referred to a few, couple of weeks ago? And we, it was six we were, at that point. we were authorized a budget of 30,000 for the parade. Okay. okay. And then um, we had a question that um, you, you've answered kindly all the questions friends of Deerfield had, but we had a question, various questions about, and one of them that didn't get totally answered was, are you going to allow like farm vehicles and commercial vehicles into the parade? Yes. Well, what do you mean by commercial? Well, I mean, like there's a lot of people that do business and they have these nice, you know, pickup or, or, or utility trucks with nice logos. They're beautiful. You know, some of these, these businesses and they might want to participate in the parade just when you have a farm vehicle that has the logo of the farm or the name of the farm on it. Well, I mean, obviously a lot of people are going to have the, their business name on their vehicle. So it's not, we're, we're just not looking for somebody to just advertise their business, but um, it, there's a lot of antique tractors. Um, we've heard from farmers with the antique tractors who want to come into the parade. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. Um, I mean, because does that impact you? Well, no, I mean, we just get these questions. We get general questions because we're involved in 350th, you know, directly and indirectly in ways. And so the question is in terms of showcasing what's going on in the town and the community at large and maximizing participation. I mean, do we, I mean, do we allow the, 
the COCOTs of the world to run one of their vehicles down the road with ce celebratory messages off of it and balloons and stuff or, or, or not, because it wasn't clear in the guidelines and the rules. Okay, well, if you have questions from anybody, please refer them to us because we are triaging them. And we did receive a response and have sent information out to the COCOTs. Oh, I, I just brought that up as an example. I, I, I have no contact with the COCOTs, to be honest. And so I just brought it up as an example of a company that I know does a lot of business in the area. Yep. We have so, um, yeah, so. we have a theme for the parade, and you know we're just trying to have people work to highlight, you know, the the history of the the community, and obviously a business like Cocot that has been here for generations um, is part of our community, as are some of our farms. So of course we would want to, but you know if. A car dealer wanted to come in and just promote their dealership, it really wouldn't be something that would be part of our celebration of our town. So that's why I think it's best that you just refer, you know, any questions over to our group. Yeah, and all I would say from a personal standpoint, not even speaking from friends of Deerfield, um, I think maximizing participation and showing and showcasing the local economy and the local participants in the economy is not a bad thing at all. And frankly, it's going to be videotaped. And that's the history of where we're at in 2023. That's our town. That's our people. That's the local fabric. That's the local economy. That's the interrelationship we have. And as long as those vehicles meet certain criteria in terms of looks and uh, aesthetics and uh, and celebratory, uh, I'm yeah, I wouldn't make it. Uh, I would just say personally, don't make it any more restrictive than necessary. But that's me, Chris Harris speaking. That is not the friends of Deerfield. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. Any any other additions, Holly, to uh, item here? No, I think that's about where we're at. We're meeting again next week. Um, Kelly, you have anything to add? Nope. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're moving forward positively. It's good. Uh, all right. Next item up is the history working group update. Um, I did my shtick on Sunday. <laughs> uh, had just shy of 100. And um, we had some tremendous eats afterwards. Thanks to friends of Deer Teal, Deerfield. Uh, had a caterer come in with nice sandwiches and fruit salad and uh, drinks. Uh, I think the, the talk went off well. Oh, it did. Uh, had, a lot of, had a lot of positive feedback. So uh, that's good. And I came home and slept for six hours. <laughs> uh, so the next talk is on the 23rd of April. That's another Sunday at two in the afternoon. Barbara Matthews from Historic Deerfield is going to talk about the poor. And then there's a the second talk is going to be on, <clears throat> excuse me, on May 7th at two o'clock. Gary Sanderson, who's been researching the development of particularly South Deerfield for years, uh, is going to give a talk on a new interpretation of Bloody Brook, the Bloody Brook neighborhood, which um, we've been kind of working together on this for a while. But with the earliest house we have down here, is 1757. Uh, so it's South Deerfield old, older than one might anticipate uh, based on its current uh, appearances. Um, the oral history interviews are going well. We've got over 25 uh, done to date. Um, and we've got more scheduled in. Uh, and multiple people have um, brought 
their old family photographs and, and other photographs in. Uh, Marie's been working with uh, Tom Clark uh, to create sort of a video collage of things he's going to put together for the walking tour of the peach for the peach orchard. Peaches? Yeah. No. Uh, anyway, um, that's coming up on April 22nd. And he's going to focus on the history of the farm. And we've got, we're, uh, she, he's bringing in photographs that we're going to work into a presentation as well as the uh, uh, one room school and wisdom. So we've been working up those two uh, things. And Marie came back, came back today with something, I can't remember if she's got a number, but it's something like 70 some odd uh, photographs from the Bradleys. Uh, that they're sending in from out of state because they're, 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 that's where they're living. With 50, something like 50 some odd emails with photographs attached to them today uh, when she was set up this morning. So that's that's it for the uh, history group. Um, You're, um, are you, how are you advertising the historic talks? I can't believe it. that's wonderful. You got a hundred people. Um, do you have the, I mean, since you gave the rest of the dates, do we have a, can we post them somewhere? Where are they posted? Well, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're posting them on the 350th. We're posting them on historic Deerfield. I'm posting them in historic Northampton. Uh, we're sending them to Northfield and we're putting them in the paper. I've created Facebook events for each of them and I've been posting them out through there and then Northfield also shares them. That's wonderful. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we were having, you know, surprisingly, not a lot of people get the newspaper anymore. So, you know, we have to use social media, media at some point. Even people who subscribe to the newspaper don't always get their newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that too. <laughs> how, about, how about FCAT? Yeah, FCAT is recording all of the things. And we did send the uh, information to FCAT to put on their bulletin board. Okay. Yeah. But we're and using so mostly the internet and social media, but things are getting reposted in a number of different places, a lot of history uh, groups and then the, the local groups too. I mean, there's Deerfield now is an incredible tool. There's so many people that are on that. Uh, and then people who don't have the internet talk to each other. So things get... Things travel, news travels fast. Good. Yeah, and I think one of the things, we had some handouts for future talks at the talk itself. So oh, people good. coming in can take those slips with them and hand them on to other people and just as a reminder them, themselves. So I, I think we're, we'll be doing okay. I, I didn't see anybody, or nobody came up and introduced themselves from really being out of town, but the- Yes, uh, yes, Warwick. There's some people came from Warwick. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there's also the uh, Northampton Historical Society is, is posting that out and they've got a readership of like 10,000 people. Wow. So, I mean, I, I think it's getting out there and as, as the talks go on, and I think the quality of talks will remain good, uh, that word will get out too. And, and so people were, it'll be a known thing rather than Oh, here's the first one. Well, maybe I maybe I'll go, maybe I won't. So, but yeah, we've got to not, not to mention the quality of the refreshments. That will bring people in too. The refreshments was, was great. Wow. Yeah. I got a Facebook message for somebody that said how great it was. They enjoyed it. Good. Good. Thanks very much. So just a question, Peter. Is the schedule go beyond May 7th? Is there anything in June or later in May? Uh, <laughs> I can see Marie scurrying around. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's some, um, historic Deerfield has some talks this summer. So we have one in April, one in May, and then we go to September, September, October, November, December. So there's nothing in June or July or August, but there's a lot of stuff going on through historic Deerfield then. Three, there's three talks being given in July, uh, Chris. On the, I think it's the 13th, the the 6th, the 13th, and the 20th. Um, 
there's a summer speaking uh, uh, Deerfield, historic Deerfield speakers uh, series in the summertime. If we, if, if there's some space that you are thinking about you do, and you want something uh, to happen in terms of a talk, I can probably cook something up. Okay. Well, no, no. I just, I just want us friends of Deerfield to be prepared for what's kind of penciled in in terms of schedule. Yeah. I thought I, I thought I sent you the schedule. I thought I no. sent you the schedule. Yeah, I just, I just didn't know. Didn't Deer next three months, are there other things no. after yeah. this? No, no, we don't have anything else that we need support for. I don't think. And and how is the the whole situation for? Um, May 6th, the Saturday of Founders Day weekend, um, shaping up. Diane, that's the, that's the bell ringing day. Oh no, I know, I thought you'd answer that one. Um, oh. we, well, we, I mean, if, well, we'll have the day. You, you had originally said something about an ice cream for right. that day, is that that's still on then? Yeah. The bell's going to ring 350 times. Um, the band's going to do two 45-minute sets. I'd like it, actually, uh, my idea is, is Peter speaks. Uh, there's bell ringing and music. It's going to be perceived as, I'd like it to be like a lawn party, where people just walk around and enjoy and enjoy your ice cream, enjoy the music, count the bells. Um, <laughs> I have asked Stone Soup Culinary Institute uh, if they'd like to come and, and sell some sort of yummy. Um, they are still been in contact with me. Uh, it, it, that's a possible that my, they may show up. Uh, Carolyn, uh, do want to ask you a question. If they do come up and they are serving food, do they need a permit of any kind? Yes, they need a um, temporary permit. Is that hard to get? No, no, you can come to the Board of Health and fill one out. Okay, they would have to ask for it or would um, well, or? you could you could get the application for them, but they would need to fill it out. They have to have their you know name who their certified serve safe person is, you know that kind okay. of thing. what kind um, of what's it what's the heading of the what's it called? Uh, it, Board of Health food temporary food application oh, the food permit food the Board permit. of and you can just call our health agent, Alex White. Okay, that was my one thing. So anyways, they uh, they actually might be coming. Um, we're working on other things, um, whether or not it's gonna be made. Well, most of it's gonna be on the lawn, on the lawn between the church and the library. As I, we, I discussed if stands in the stands there somewhere. Um, he did discuss that you were going to have the uh, the ice cream, Chris, yep. and um, it's, it's not supposed to be a, a well, how do I say it, just going to be ringing the bells and people having a, like a lawn party, ice cream social lawn party. Holly? Um, what, what if there's weather? Um, the weather, it's going to happen with weather anyways, I think. I'm not sure what to say. The band is coming. The next day is going to be speakers and stamp postage um, at Frontier. So uh, if you have to bring an umbrella, uh, there is going to be a small tent that the band's going to be under. I believe the ice cream is going to have a small tent. Um, well, we have a 10 by 20 foot tent yeah. that we can bring. The band's going to be under the yours. I'm hoping for yours. And, uh, and, and who is the band? Farley String Band. It's an oh. eight eight person. Um, what do they they do? Celtic and Scottish reels and stuff like that. I asked them to play a little bit of American songs, and um, we'll see. They may be able to. I asked them to play stuff people can sing along to. You know, something that's familiar. 
and it's mainly about socialization. I think, in fact, even that's what you talked last yesterday, Peter. Uh, we all learned a lot about the beginnings of Deerfield, but I think the enhancement was people got out, went out in the hallway, had some food, and were able to actually socialize with each other. It's been a long time since yeah. we've actually been out, so I, I think that's that's my main idea is get people out, get them out, get them used to seeing each other. If I have to actually say it that way, be it COVID gone for so many years, well, not so many, but because of COVID, we stopped going out. I want people to come out on Founders Day to come out, just walk around. Even if you're just walking on the sidewalk and not interacting, just come on, get out of your houses, count bells. And then it gets people more inclined to want to come out and watch the parade in the next month to be more involved with just stuff around just because. Dare I ask if we've got the um, church situation sorted out? No, we don't. We're not going to discuss <laughs> what, that. What do tonight? we have to do to get to yeah. yes on that, Carolyn? Um, I really don't know. Uh, we need to talk to the building and commissioner and, you know, think about it some more. We, we and, some protest letters. As yeah, you, yeah. yeah, what do you plan to do about them? Are we going to go talk to them and convince them that we're not trying to put our children in danger or what? Well, sometimes it's, it's just better not to engage <laughs> when engage you know, a aggressive letter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, just to our I have an option. The, the bells will ring, the kids will be outside if need be, and uh, we'll bring, we'll have tents. If you if it rains, bring an umbrella. And uh, I, I think one of the things, Carolyn, we've got to talk to somebody, whether it's the building inspector or somebody else, and say, look, we've been, we've heard that the church has this, and we've heard the church has that, and we've heard the church has this, and this is why we can't do it. And I've not seen any proof of any of it. It's just a rumor. I know. It, the air is fine. I use it for my EDS, you know, my emergency dispensing um, equipment. I'm in and out of there myself. So I, I feel, you know, I am allergic to mold and mildew if, and it, it's not moldy and mildew. There's not anything we have to worry about on that. It's just the, the building is closed up. So you open the doors up a little bit and let the air open the windows. Yeah. And, and it's fine. Um, the asbestos is, you know, related to the heating system. And as long as it's contained and, um, you know, wrapped, it doesn't become airborne and therefore it's not an emergency. And I have no reason to believe that there's any reason for the kids to be in this, in the cellar or the basement. So. And, and, and the, the pipes are in the, in a different building. I mean, they're in the attached building. They're not even in the church. And so, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff the the problem is there isn't an occupancy permit so what i have to do is we have to work with the building commissioner and see if we can get a temporary occupancy permit. using the building Probably. is different than having the public access but if we can figure out a way that like you are going to bring in groups of kids they will be 100 percent um you know sh uh chaperoned and they're in and out within a few minutes. Um, you know, no one's going to gnaw on the windowsills. I, I don't really feel like there is any issues. And I am chair of the Board of Health. So, um, and I certainly am a grandmother. So I would certainly take the health of children 100% serious. But so we just have to figure something out that is legally possible. We'll do it. So should I approach? the building no I, i've t i've talked to bob we just what we have to do is is we have to set up a meeting diane and peter and myself and bob yes. we just need to yes. figure out how we're gonna manage it so that he will feel comfortable um you know with, with what we're gonna do okay that's fine i'm, I'm yeah. game we'll figure it out yeah i'm, I'm not really worried and I, you know, I, I back to what Marie was talking about earlier. I'm, I'm inclined. What if we can get that straightened out, and say these 
these are not impediments to using this building. I would be inclined to get a hold of the grannies and just say, look, we've gone through the whole process here. There's not an issue. I, it's it's Bring, different. Peter, it's certainly different if you or Diane wanted to talk to him or Marie or whoever. Right. Okay. It's a little bit different than me talking to them. That's fine. And, and I, don't, I don't mind doing that. But I, we, I, I do feel, I'll feel comfortable if, if Bob's agreeable in terms of saying, okay, we can, we can do this. Um, I don't have a problem with addressing it outside. I, and you don't have to talk officially for the town or anything else. Right. But it's, it just, rather than, we think everything's hunky-dory and we don't say anything. And then all of a sudden we wind up having a bunch of screaming people show up down there just to make sure we're not doing something. I know. And there's no issue. It, it just, <laughs> I think it's easier. To... We don't need negative publicity. We want positive publicity. We don't want negative publicity. No, and that's absolutely, you know, our concern. Yeah. We certainly. So sure. But if they want to bring a transgender dance troupe, that might be very entertaining. So that would be fine, you know. Yeah. We'll, even, we'll even have the music for them. Yeah. They can, they can dance a jig. <laughs> anyway. You know, Monday, um, April 3rd, I, I only have two meetings in the morning. Maybe we could do something um, in the afternoon, early afternoon. If I set it up with Bob, would that be convenient for Diane and Oh, and Peter? yep. Monday or whoever. Yeah. Monday, April 3rd. Let's, let's, I don't know. I'll, I can talk to Bob, but uh, I, I'll say like one or two. I'll confirm some, sometimes he has set inspections. So um, let me see what his schedule is, but I would say like afternoon, my, my last meeting starts at 11. So it should be done by noonish. Okay. Uh, just as long as we're, if you're going to be down there, uh, let's plan on 20 minutes down in the cave. I want to show you how far I am with the. Oh, with the sure. sure. Yeah, uh, I'll be I'm getting pretty much through with the with the documents. Okay. All right, that's lovely. Thank you. Um, I think that's. Is that the end of my? Oh, no, here we go. Uh, updates, friends of Deerfield. So, so I, I'll take the lead on this one. Uh, I think we've covered um, a lot of what was on my short list, but just an update on the Sunday, 18th of June, uh, chicken barbecue. It'll be held at Deerfield Academy uh, Tennis Pavilion. Um, we are selling, actively selling tickets now. We'll ramp up that website and through other social media outlets, et cetera, and through some physical advertising once we can sort out all the venue issues so that we can use, you know, flyers that cover the whole weekend. Um, but I think we've sold, uh, we're pushing a hundred tickets at this point. And, you know, our goal would be uh, about 500 to 600. And it looks like people are choosing between the seating time, say seating, we're talking about eating times. So, because we can't serve all the food at one shot but we have 1 p.m., 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. out there. And right now it's balanced between the three in terms of how the tickets are coming in, which is also very good from a, you know, a traffic and a parking control plan up there in terms of balancing everything. Um, but that doesn't preclude people showing up early to enjoy a, a drink and listen to some music or staying a little bit later. You know, we, we're going to have enough seating capacity to handle a lot more than 200 for each seating, if you know what I mean. But um, so I just wanted to give that update. Um, and um, the other thing that's encouraging is that we've had people reaching out to us, you know, can we have some display tables underneath the, the tennis pavilion covering, et cetera, you know, like um, PVA or, or the like, and that's great. And, uh, you know, to Peter has these historical posters, et cetera. So we're, we're, we have plenty of room. So we're looking at uh, already preliminary planning in terms of how will we get more things on display that people can look at since it's a rain or shine event and it's undercover, 
you know, once we have it set up, we're in good shape. So that that's that'll be that'll be fun for for people to meander and see some things. Diane, I just thought of something. Uh, Marie's been uh, collecting all these photos. Is there a way to have a big screen or projector screen or something to oh. have a um, a display of the photos? Absolutely. Well, I mean, that was actually just, we, just, Chris. we just need the power connection. We don't have the power there, Chris. Okay. Oh, no, we, no, okay. we, I'm going to disagree a little bit with Stan. Okay, we, can, we can run. <laughs> we can run hundreds of feet of 12 gauge extension cord over to where the power is, and we'll just hide it on the perimeter that nobody gets involved with it. But well, the so we, we need power. To do that. Yeah, but but a, a large screen TV takes no electricity in terms of wattage whatsoever. So it's just a matter of the logistics of, of long runs of extension cords, but it, it's a draw of the power system at all. That'd be excellent. So we just have to get creative and plan it out. But some of us are going to be on the ground several days in advance, and we'll sort that out and we'll make it happen. If 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 Marie has it and has some sort of like, PowerPoint or, you know, slideshow, you know, even if it's not really edited, it's cool. You know, Just people, the pictures are cool. Yeah. People enjoy that. So we can do that. One of the things that we've been doing is Marie's been getting all the pictures in and I've been editing them as they come in. So I think we could, if that's a way to go, we'll have enough photographs. We can put them all in a PowerPoint and just have the PowerPoint go through. Absolutely. And um, I think we can even add music to the PowerPoint. I'm not sure. Well, there's going to be a band, Pete, so you don't want to right. have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're to be can I get the content uh, so that I can post it on the website as well as Facebook? The, like, the information about the chicken barbecue. Yeah. Like, I mean, things yeah. like that. Yeah, we need menus and bands and all that kind of detail. Uh, Kelly, that's, I think, what you're suggesting. Ticket issues, et cetera. And our, our, our Friends of Deerfield website is not totally updated yet, but, but it should be within one to two weeks. And buying tickets online, that includes buying tickets online. Mm -hmm. Right now we're we're doing it by cash and check. So that's the chicken barbecue update. Um, and then um, the other, a couple just other couple quick things is we're, we're looking at there's there's just a handful of monuments in South Deerfield that would be along the parade route that um, they sit in front of Tilton Library down at Bloody Brook. Obviously, that's the most um, you know, impressive monument that people know, but there's Captain Ray, uh, Lathrop monuments, et cetera. So we're looking at um, having those properly um, cleared and cleaned and landscaped for the parade for sure, probably by Memorial Day. That is and really so, nice. Thank you. And so, so you know, we'll we'll leverage off what we know about these marble and granite monuments up in the cemeteries, and we'll use the same professional techniques. And um, Friends of Deerville will work with uh, John Novi and the Deerfield Historical Commission to get the right approvals and, and the right scopes of work that are approved. Um, and then um, we'll reach out to uh, Diane Gripko and the Deerfield Women's um, um, group in terms of some of the landscaping too. They just make sure, I mean, they have to be clean first, then you do the landscaping afterwards, the flowers and stuff like that. You know what, uh, Peter, I was just gonna um, mention that I think PVMA is going to um, work on the Bloody Brook, although I think it's the next year because it, you know how they did a lot of restoration work on the um, the soldier uh, monument. So um, that's really great. Thank you, Chris. 
I I mean that will make yes. So the so just looking at they've sent me photos looking at the bloody brook. I mean, I don't think it was anywhere near what the um, uh, Civil War monument was in Deerfield in terms of degradation. It's, it looks in pretty good shape, but let's clean it up and then bring in some experts to look at um, certain mortaring of joints and things like that. But I don't think it's a wholesale reconstruction by any means and reassembly. It looks like it's in rather remarkable shape compared to what we've seen in the cemetery and what we saw in Old Deerfield. Yeah. But, but you know, everything will go through John Novi and the Deer, Deerfield Historical Commission. Great. Uh, but we have a commitment for the clean, the special cleaning solutions and, and support on the tools and stuff like that to do the basic cleaning. Oh, that's great. Holly had a question. Uh, Chris, as far as the timing goes, I know you're referencing the parade. Um, my battery saver is on, so I'm going to talk quick before I run and get a plug. Um, the Women's Club has the um, commons ready for the Memorial Day parade. So would that be preceding the Memorial, more, excuse me, the yeah. Memorial? Because yeah, so, so when I said the, the parade, I, I also kind of snuck in, actually it needs to be ready before Memorial Day. Everything needs to be ready before Memorial Day. Okay, great. But, Thank you. but when, when we clean these, you know, in terms of access, in terms of solution, in terms of it's water-based solution, but it, you know, it's still you don't want new plant life to be around the base of the monument right. in terms of the drips that come down. So yeah. we'll do the cleaning first, then allow natural rainfalls to continue to clean it, and then within three or four weeks thereafter, you can plant flowers and things like that. Okay. Chris, are you, uh, I think the uh, cemetery downtown along uh, Sugarloaf Street's in pretty good shape. Uh, is there a way to get a couple plantings or something at the gate of the of the cemetery along the parade route? I'll, I'll bring that up. I'll bring that up, Peter. The Women's Club. Yep. There is uh, one of the things I I told somebody from from Memorial Day, but there is a um, black Revolutionary War soldier buried in that cemetery. Uh, a guy named Charles Payne, who lived in town for about 40 years. He died in 107. Wow. Yeah, so I think we're pretty clear on, on veterans, including going back to the Revolutionary War, Sugarloaf Cemetery. I mean, I have a file on it myself. And uh, so I work with John Seuss to make sure we're not missing anybody. Well, his they used to they used to be a Revolutionary War marker for Charles Payne, but I can't find it anymore. Yeah. And uh, but I have a, a fairly good biography of him, if uh, if you're interested. No, we'll try to get that. I'll, I'll pull that. Fun. See, uh, at one point there was a revolutionary marker that somebody had sent me photos on that was astray. It wasn't near a grave site. So it might have been displaced, actually. Well, it, yeah, it, it, there was a turn of the century listing of Revolutionary War markers in the cemeteries and who they were marking. And that's uh, his, his descendant. Was a lawyer down in the Carolinas, and she was act retracing his steps and stuff. But uh, spent three years on the front lines of the Continental Army, and was at West Point. Got struck by lightning, and had a whole bunch of kids. And anyway, uh, I love to I'll, we'll follow up if 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 you want. But I've got some. No, definitely, definitely. We, we try to update these things every year when we learn new information. Um, so the only other the only other update time capsule update um, we are working with Pelican Products in terms of the design and the eventual um, production of an outer uh, case to encapsulate the um, the um, stainless steel 
time capsule itself in, so I'm protective. Um, and then, um, and then the question becomes, and I think it's still not been addressed in detail at this point, where could we possibly bury the time capsule? And it'll be sizable in, in terms of the space it takes up to bury it, um, ultimately. Um, and um, so, you know, two things in South Deerville that come to mind, the properties that the town will probably maintain for long periods of time is somewhere around in front of the Tilt Library, maybe down at the Bloody Brook Monument. And so, but I don't know that anyone's discussed this, but it's time to start discussing it and find a place so that that planning can proceed. And I thought that I had heard before that you were thinking about potentially burying it, you know, later in the in the fall time frame, you know, so that we could capture a lot of the three fiftieth, you know, memorabilia, and what will be called artifacts, into the time capsule before it's buried. Chris, what's the outer size of that going to be? I don't know. It's actually that's a discussion with Pelican because based on how they designed the protective case, that'll determine dimensions actually. Okay. Right now it's eight, 18 and a half by 18 and a half by 24 and a half high, I think, mm -hmm. if I remember the measurements correctly. Yeah. But okay. not, that's not what it's gonna end up by any means. It'll be bigger with cushions. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just something to start thinking about. I don't know who's, brainstorming about that but but we need to it's not too soon to start thinking about that the um, goal with Pella, the goal with pelican is to is to have all the fabrication of their protected case done by the 31st of what was the date chris to with pelican to have the outer case fabricated and ready for use by the 31st of July. But that, that anticipates a fall type ceremony and burial. Great. Yeah, that should be well in advance. That, that should be fine. Anything else? So, I mean, unless Marie or Stan has something, those were the highlights that I had. I'm seeing two, I'm seeing two nodding heads that are going back and forth. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right, we don't have any new, new business here, Diane. I, just, I have one question. Um, the Leary lot, what accessibility will that be for the parade? <laughs> and are there gonna be food trucks in the center of town? Um, are they going to be, is that, um, and maybe that's yours, Holly, would you know that? Were they going to be food trucks in town during the parade? Uh, will there be out, outside vendors? The, the food trucks, indoor music, um, post parade was going to be the Deerfield Rec Department responsibility. Okay. Already. But nothing would be pre, there won't be anything during the parade. Will there be food trucks in town during the parade? Or is this something people have to apply to come into town to sell food? Is that? Well, they would have to apply um, to have a food truck in town. Uh, but right. um, during the parade is the parade. So we weren't okay. worried about yeah. it. All righty. The Larry lot, um, I mean, we are moving ahead on it, but it will just be a mode space. Mode space, okay. Kevin, Kevin will mow it for us so that, you know, it looks... It can be usable. It just we won't we won't have it dug up by then. I don't think. <laughs> if it's not raining, it might be a good option for parking. You know, if it's not raining, if it is raining, it's going to be a mud pit. You know, people park there right now. They do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, grassed over. I yeah. mean, sort of hard pack grass kind of thing. I mean, we we're supposed to have it all done, but. Well, yeah, but at least it's, some, like I said, if it's not raining, that's another option for parking in town and uh, yep. just don't have them exit onto uh, Main Street, that's all. Right. Okay. 
Although, although we might have that cleared off, it just won't be a legitimate exit. Correct. Correct. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second that, Carolyn. <laughs> All those in favor? Hi, Dan. Hi, Holly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Carolyn. And we're at eight o'clock on the nose, folks. Thank you.